Hey guys, Chris Hayes with you this morning. Uh, I'm bringing you a Sunday School lesson this week from Holly Springs Baptist Church. I want to take a moment to welcome everyone. Glad that you could join in with us for uh, our fellowship hour and as we study God's Word together. If you're visiting with us today, we want to give you a very special welcome. Glad that you decided to join in with us and we hope you get a uh, get something out of our lesson today. Uh, today, I want to start by, first of all, asking the church to pray for a very special request that I, that I have on my heart today. Uh, one of the guys in my class, Stan Nix, had some surgery this week. Uh, doing well, I think, uh, from what I understand uh, from the doctor's report. And uh, But he's got a long road ahead of him. So I want to ask our church family to remember Stan and, and Adrian and all their family as, as you pray in the coming days. And uh, Stan, if you're out there watching this morning, uh, we love you, buddy. We're uh, thinking about you, praying for you. If there's anything you guys need, don't hesitate to give us a call. With that being said, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless our time and, and study together this morning. Father God, we come to you today. We're so grateful and thankful that you blessed us with life and health and strength, that you give us the opportunity to come together to worship you in spirit and truth here today as we study your word together. God, you are the great and mighty God, and there's none other besides you. God, you are awesome in so many ways that we can't even begin to fathom. And Lord, your love is just so incredible that uh, you proved how much you love us by sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. We'll be forever grateful for that, Lord. God, today as we study your word, we pray that your spirit will lead us and guide us and direct us, that it would teach us and encourage us and give us just what we stand in need of today. Lord, I do uh, pray again for Stan and uh, for healing and a speedy recovery after his surgery. For others, Father, who may have needs today, whether they're sick or lost a loved one or other things going on in their life, God, just reach down from heaven and bless and touch in that situation as only you can. Let them feel your presence and your power and know that you're God and you're on your throne. Lord, we thank you for our church and our church family. We thank you for our pastor and his wife. We ask your blessings upon them as they lead us in worship and ministry. Lord, help us to come along beside of them and to do our part to help shine the light in our community and in this world uh, for Jesus Christ, wherever we find ourselves. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Draw us closer to you as we go forward today. Lord, speak, again, speak to our hearts. We humbly pray and ask all these things right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Well, like I said, we started a new series of lessons last week. Ms. Kathy Pitts kicked it off and did a wonderful job with it, with the first lesson. But the, the title of the series of lessons is After God's Own Heart, A Fresh Look at the Ten Commandments. And basically what we're doing over the next few weeks is we're going back and we're looking at the Ten Commandments. And, and we're comparing, you know, our lives as Christians and, and looking to see if we are living in accordance with God's law. In his direction for our lives. Uh, Miss Kathy last week talked about putting God first, giving him first billing in everything and having no other gods uh, before him and worshiping, you know, false idols and, and things like that, are, is, which is not good. And, and, you know, a lot of times when we think about idols, you know, we may think about those little statues, you know, uh, you think about what what Moses, uh, you know, when his brother Aaron and the people built the golden calf to worship and you know, a lot of times we think about idols as being that, but idols are so much more than that. They could be anything that, that takes precedence in our life that, that becomes, you know, the dominating factor in our life. It could be power, uh, money, possessions, you know, it could be celebrities. It could be so many different things that, that we put ahead of God. And, and that's not good. And Miss, Miss Kathy challenged us last week to take a look at our life and make sure that we're putting God first in everything, above everything in any one. So hopefully you guys are doing that. Hopefully you guys got that challenge last week and you got that one straight and moving forward. Uh, today's challenge is to honor God. And that's the title of this lesson today. And, you know, you may ask, well, why, why are we taking a look at these Ten Commandments? What's so, what's the driving force behind this? Well, you know, just take a look around you. Uh, turn on the news. What do you see? You know, you see a lot of things that people are are doing that are not in accordance with God's will and God's word and God's law. You know, they're living a, a, a life that's not very moral, not very ethical, uh, and they're embracing it and they're saying it's okay. Well, 
Why are they doing that? It's because they're putting themselves first. They're putting their desires and they're making themselves God uh, instead of being obedient to the one true God. And, and that's why, you know, we want to make sure that, that we as Christians, that we examine ourselves daily to make sure that we're in line uh, with Almighty God, that we do put him first and that we do glorify and honor him above all things, uh, first and foremost, and that, that we are uh, being obedient to him. And to us, it is so important that we do that. You know, uh, our scripture today comes from Exodus, uh, where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, but it also comes out of uh, the Psalms, uh, Psalms 145. Uh, you know, that was written by King David. And, and, and what was David known for? He was known as being a man after God's own heart, right? Well, he was known that way because he did honor God. He put God first. He, you know, God, David was not a perfect man. We know that David sinned and David made mistakes, but his heart's desire was to ultimately honor God and, and, and do the things that God wanted him to do. And if you read the Psalms, it's full of wonderful examples, you know, where when, when David or the people obeyed God, how God blessed them in such a wonderful way. But when they disobeyed God, you know, things didn't go so well for them. So that ought to be a, a lesson for us in itself right there to, to make us want to obey the word of God and, and obey his Ten Commandments. So uh, as we kick it off now, we'll go to Exodus. Uh, we're going to be in chapter 20, and I'm going to read to you verses 7 through 11 to get, uh, to get things going. And hopefully I can read without uh, stuttering here. Uh, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So uh, when you think about honoring God, um, three things come to mind for me. Uh, you know, we can honor God with our words. You know, and a lot of times you hope people say that talk is cheap and you hear a lot of people talk a good game, but they don't back it up with their actions, right? Your actions speak louder than words. So you've got to talk the talk, but you've also got to walk the walk. You know, those are two things, talking the talk, walking the walk. And the other thing is our worship. You know, all of those things, our talk, our, our actions and, and our worship demonstrate both to God and to the world around us. You know, what kind of relationship we have with Almighty God. And, and that's what it's all about, uh, is a personal relationship with God. You know, I hope you have that personal relationship with God. And I'll say more about that probably at the end of the lesson. But if you don't, think about it. Just listen to some of the things we talk about today. You know, and ask yourself the question, first and foremost, do I have that personal relationship with God? And then, for those of you who do, uh, who call yourself a Christian, you know, as we go through and talk about some of the topics today, you know, question yourself, examine yourself, you know, am I being obedient? Am I saying the right things? Am I doing the right things? Am I worshiping the right way? And am I doing it for the right reasons? So all of those things are very, very important if we're going to honor God. Um, when you think about honor and respect, uh, about people that you come in contact with with today what kinds of people do you think about uh when you show respect you know uh, you know right now we're getting close to an election so uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is the president when you if you have the opportunity to meet the president face to face and to talk to him how what are you going to say to him what you know how are you going to address him first and foremost i guess is what i'm saying uh most of us are not going to say hey donald how you doing hey big don what's going on you know, you're going to say, Mr. President, you're going to call him Mr. President because it's a sign of honor and respect for the position that he holds. Right. You know, uh, if you go to a courtroom uh, and you stand before a judge, you're going to call him oh, so and so, whatever his name is. Are you going to call him your honor? Most of us call him your honor because, again, it's a sign of respect for the position that he holds. And guys and gals, if you're, you're dating and uh, you go and uh, walk in and meet the parents of, uh, of your 
uh, significant other for the first time and you know how are you going to address them you're going to hey you know hey sandy how you doing you're going to say hey miss hayes how are you nice to meet you there. again you're showing respect you know well no one on the face of this earth deserves more respect than almighty god right we should respect and honor him above anyone else we come in contact with but because we honor and we respect him then we will honor and respect others as well it kind of flows downhill you get it right from the top and you know as it goes downhill you'll keep it right huh? that's kind of the way i look at this thing but here god says um you know thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. When you hear that statement and you hear that commandment, I guess the first thing that, that comes to mind for a lot of us is the fact that, that, that we use cussing or swear words along with God uh, to take his name in vain. And that's bad, you know, and that's one meaning. But there's much more to it. It's a bigger, broader meaning. Other than, you know, swearing and cussing uh, with a reference to God, uh, what about using speech that demeans uh god's character uh that un, uh, undermines his power and his majesty in other words you know a lot of times you might hear somebody say oh my god oh my god or the man upstairs or the big guy in the sky you know those are slang names that we throw out there and i don't think we do that sometimes that you know with a, with a thought of demeaning god but then again a lot of people do you know you know what is the motive of your heart to say things like that you know god is almighty and all powerful uh and, and he deserves uh you know our utmost respect and we should not use his name in any kind of demeaning way whatsoever you know remember when jesus uh gave us the model prayer in matthew chapter six uh what did he say he said uh, you know hallowed be thy name hallowed and again here we read at the end there and hallowed it talking about the sabbath day but beginning thinking about the hallowed name of god what does the word hallowed mean it, it means uh holy it means it set apart it means that you're sanctified you know our god is like i said he's all powerful he's all knowing he's far and above uh anything that we can ever imagine far greater than anything that we could ever know say do or understand you know he is infinite in wisdom and power and knowledge and, and he deserves honor and respect when we talk about him we should honor him we should not demean his name and who he is and his character in any way shape form or fashion we cannot demean his dignity and his character why because he's god and we're not you know you remember when uh god called moses to go to the people of israel to deliver them from the egyptians uh moses asked god the question well who do i say sent me what was god's response he said i am that i am you tell them that i am sent me right uh you know god is the i am he's not who we want him to be he's who he is you know and a lot of times we forget that uh, a couple other names to throw out there at you uh, that refer to God. Uh, you ever heard the name Yahweh, right? Yahweh means Lord. You know, that was given to God. Uh, and it, that name Yahweh was so sacred to the Jewish people uh, that they were scared uh, to even attempt to say his name because they didn't want to mess it up. They didn't want to say it wrong or they didn't want to use it in the wrong way. So they were afraid to even... Uh, demean God's name, his character, his dignity in any way, shape, form, or fashion by associating the name Yahweh with anything else they were saying. Um, they would substitute the Hebrew word for Lord, Adonai, a lot of times as well. But that's, you know, uh, God has many names. I am Yahweh, Adonai, and the list goes on and on and on. But they are all names for Almighty God. And, and we should honor that name. We should respect that name. And, and we should never, ever uh, take his name in vain in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So that's lesson one uh, from this third commandment that we read here. Uh, think about 
a celebrity or a public figure or a sports individual, somebody that you look up to and that you show honor to and kind of compare the way you honor them with the way that you honor God. You know, it's sports season. It's football season. We just kicked off, you know, this this week, last couple of weeks, we've had some college football games going on. And I love football as much as anybody else. But think about people out there who spend a ton of money, uh, you know, to buy t- season tickets and to support the Boosters Club and, you know, buy a bunch of tailgate gear. And, and you'll take your whole day, you know, uh, to go down and tailgate and buy a bunch of food and go in and watch the game to watch your favorite player, your favorite team play. You know, my favorite team is Clemson. I love the Tigers. Uh, Tigers are loaded this year. They got a fantastic quarterback and running back. You know, uh, Trevor Lawrence and, and Travis Etienne, and both of those guys are Heisman candidates this year, are hopefuls. And, you know, a lot of people idolize uh, people like that, and they glorify them, and they honor people like that because of their talents and their abilities. But those guys, those celebrities, those sports figures, these people that 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 people here idolize, they're nothing compared to Almighty God. You ever thought about that? So I challenge you, first and foremost, you know, are you honoring God? Are you honoring His name the way that you honor those people that you idolize here on this earth? Hopefully, it's far and above. Hopefully, it's way more than that. All right, uh, the fourth commandment there uh, in the next verse says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. You know, what is the Sabbath? What does that mean? That's the Hebrew word, uh, Sabbat, which means uh, restfulness. Uh, It's the, you know, it represents the day that God stopped and rested after he created this earth. After he made everything in it, he worked hard for six days. And we have that account there in Genesis of everything that he made throughout those six days. But but on the seventh day, he stopped and he rested and he admired his creation. You know, when we think about the Sabbath, we think about a lot of times Sunday, which for us, that's the day that Christians set aside to come together to worship God, uh, which for us is Sunday. Uh, but for the Jews, uh, their Sabbath is Saturday, diff- different day, but, you know, again, for the same reason. So, you know, that day is holy. That day is special. That day is set apart. Again, the last part of, of the scripture here talks about the Sabbath being hallowed. Uh, it means it's holy and set apart. It's set apart to honor God for his great and mighty power, his great creative works. Uh, again, we honor God. When we remember the Sabbath and we keep it holy, we keep it sanctified, that we keep it about God. You know, we're challenged here not to work on the Sabbath. And, and, and the writer, you know, goes into great detail, says we shouldn't work, nor our sons, nor our daughters, nor our men servants and maid servants, even our animals. You know, that's how hallowed the, the, the Sabbath day should be to us you know on, on the Sabbath day uh, we're challenged to keep it holy which means to be faithful uh, in setting that day aside for the purpose uh, according to God's instructions you know it's 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 to remember the great and mighty God that he is and the creation that he gave us you know all, on the Sabbath we go to church on the Sabbath we sing praises to his name on the Sabbath we worship the Creator you know we stop from our work and our labor we honor and we respect God after the six days of creation that's what it's all about and the intent of this command is so that you and i will develop that rhythm that we 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 dedicate that time uh to rest and to honor god and to glorify him very very important that we remember that so from these few verses of scripture three truths that 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 we see um Number one, let me flip over here where I can read them to you. I got notes and I got the book and I got my Bible and it's hard to keep up with everything. But uh, lasting truth here from Exodus chapter 20 says, God is holy. Uh, Thus his name is to be used in ways that honor his holiness. And it says to keep the Sabbath includes taking actions appropriate to the intent of the Sabbath. You know, such as learning about God, resting and being refreshed and honoring God. So again, I ask the question, I ask it, you know, first of all, are you honoring the name of God? And secondly, are you honoring the Sabbath? Are you, you are you uh, attending church regularly? Are you attending for the right reasons? Do you do you, let me ask this question. I, I asked my Sunday school class 
uh, this question a lot of times, you know, do you prepare yourself to come in here on Sunday morning? Do you spend time in prayer asking God to meet you here? Do you do you spend time in prayer asking God to teach you and encourage you and to lift you up and, and asking God to help you get to know him better and who he is and his ways better? All those kinds of things are a part of the Sabbath. That, those are the kinds of things that we should be doing uh, that, that bring honor to God as we come together and we worship on the Sabbath. So are you doing those things? All right. So now let's move over to the book of Psalms. Uh, like I said, we'll be reading uh, Psalms 145 today. And we got a couple passages of scripture here. The first one is verses 1 through 3 in Psalm 145. It says, I will extol thee, my king. O king, I will extol thee, my God, O king. And I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee. And I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. So here we're, we're talking about the worship aspect of it. We're to honor God uh, with our worship. Uh, the psalmist here calls God king, right? When you think about king, you think once again about the position. You think about someone who is worthy, someone who deserves our honor and our praise. Uh, he says, I will extol thee, my God, O king. That word extol means to lift up or to raise or to exalt. Excuse me. So uh, in this, the psalmist was saying that he would raise God above all others. Uh, I will extol thee, my God, O king. In other words, I will lift you up and put you on a pedestal above all the world. There is none like you. There's no one else worthy as you are. There's no one else that deserves our praise more than you do. Do you feel that way about God in your worship? Is he the object of your worship like none other? And I hope so because it's not even close. It shouldn't be even close. When you think about who God is and what he does for us each and every day, what he did all those years ago and what he's doing right now and what he's going to be doing, you know, 10,000 years from now. You know, he's still God. He's still the king. He's still on the throne and he's still worthy of us lifting him up, you know, above all others in our worship. Uh, the writer also says, I will bless thy name, right? Bless means to kneel. Uh, kneeling before another is a sign of what? It's a sign of, of humility, right? You know, they're great and mighty and we're not, right? Uh, he uses the word praise, which means to boast or celebrate. So if you break this verse down and you look at these verses down and you look at it, what the psalmist is really saying here is that he's committed uh, to exalt God as king above all others. And that he's going to kneel uh, before him in humility. And not just that, but he's going to celebrate his name. You know, that's what worship is. Kneeling before the great and mighty king, humbly recognizing him for who he is and his place of power and authority in our hearts and our lives, and and to celebrate that. And, and, and to ask you another question there, how often should we do that? Well, he tells us here, forever and ever. You know, this is not something we just do on Sunday morning, though it is a part of our, our re religious worship service together. But... Our relationship worship service to God is something that we should continually do day in and day out, every day, wherever we find ourselves and everything, that we should continue to worship God. We should continue to glorify Him and, and recognize Him as, as the great and mighty God and we'll humble ourselves before His authority and His power and to celebrate that relationship. You know, we have so much to celebrate. When you think about the great and mighty God we serve and how He sustains us, how He gives us life, you know, and, and I don't, you know, I, I, I have a college degree and I've studied a lot of different things, but I cannot comprehend, fathom, or understand how anybody could take a look at this creation that God made and how it all fits together so perfectly and works together so perfectly, or, or our human bodies, as complex as they are, how every little cell has a purpose that works together for the greater good of the whole body. You know, there is not uh, there is a God who put all this together. You know, it didn't just explode and happen. 
you know, and, and I worship God for that. I thank God for that. I glorify him for that. And, and he deserves my worship and praise because of that. But it's not just that. Think about, like I was saying earlier, David in his examples through the Psalms and his writings, you know, time and time again talks about how God blesses us when we're faithful, faithful and obedient to him. Well, when we worship God with a heart and a, a desire to, to glorify and honor him because he's God for all the right reasons, man, there's nothing more sweeter that, that, that joys the soul any more than to come together and worship the one true God with a heart of worship, of honor, and humility before him. It, it lifts me up like nothing else. And, and if you've been a part of it, you know what I'm talking about. He deserves that. Why? He's great. It says the Lord is great, greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Again, we can't fathom just how wonderful God is, just how powerful God is, just how majestic God is, just how righteous God is, just how uh, all-knowing he is. He's everywhere at the same time, and his mercy endures forever. He's our healer. He's our provider. You know, he, he allows us to wake up every morning. He gives us a job to go to. He provides us with food. Yeah, we we think we earn that job or, or whatever, but God allows us to get that job and, and provides us just what we need. That's why we should honor him. That's why we should worship him. Recognizing his authority, that he is the king, he's on the throne, and he's worthy of our praise and worship. So let's look at the lasting truths here from, from this section of Scripture. It says, uh, number one, it said that God is the sovereign king and we're to honor him by bowing in worship before him. Uh, number two, it says God is worthy of every expression of praise and worship we can express. Number three, giving honor to the Lord is not a mere religious practice or only done when he has done something miraculous in our lives is to be constant and unending. You know, that's something else, too. A lot of times we praise him when he's blessed us with something good. But what about the tough times, the hard times, the struggles in life we go through? Are we still praising and worshiping then? I hope we are because we should. Because he's the same in the midst of our struggles as he is in the midst of our triumphs. So he deserves that honor and worship. And then lastly, it says our praise and worship is to be unlimited because his greatness is unlimited. We honor God in worship because he deserves it. Because he's everything. And he gives us everything and he provides for our needs. He's worthy. All right, let's take a look at the last uh, three verses here. Uh, continuing on in, in, in chapter 145 in the book of Psalms, uh, verses 4 through 7, it says, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of the, thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the mind of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. So lastly, as I said earlier, we should honor God with our actions or our testimony, right? We are to honor God with our testimony and actions. It backs up what we say with our words. Our actions speak louder than words. You know, take a look at here again at, at David's heart for God. It really shines through in what he's saying here. Uh, I'm going to read some some things I jotted down for you. It says that, that he talks about sharing everything that he knows about God to others, which is what? That's our testimony, right? How much time do you spend in devotion and study and learning about who God is? about all his wondrous works you know it says god's great works god's mighty acts god's majesty god's wondrous works you know all these things are things that only god can do you know things that that we can't even begin to imagine how he does it or why he does it you know we don't deserve a lot of those things uh it talks about terrible acts there again those are not bad things those are those all inspiring acts that god has performed you know, the miracles that, that, that we've seen, you know, God do. All of those things we should be learning about and we should be telling others about it. You know, he says here, one generation shall praise thy works to another. You know, parents, this is a challenge for you today. You know, are you sharing God with your children? Are you telling them not only what the word of God says, 
and, and uh, what he says to do and not to do, but why he says to do it and not to do it, and what is the result when we do the right things and, and stay away from the wrong things, and you know, not just what he says in his word, but what has he done in your life? You know, one of the times when he showed up and showed out, are you passing those along to your children? We're supposed to teach our children and pass it on to the next generations. But it's bigger than that. It's not just about our children. It's about our spouses. It's about our extended family. It's about our, our co-workers and our friends. And it's about strangers both here and around the world. You know, this is part of our job to, to glorify and honor God is sharing in our actions and our testimony with other people about who God is and what he's done in and through our lives, right? And for us. Um, so let me ask you this question. What do you know about God? You know, I've heard a lot of people say when asked to teach uh, Sunday school or other class, well, I don't really think I know enough uh, to teach about God. Or, you know, something like that, you hear somebody say, well, why don't you know enough? You know, are you honoring God by spending time in his word, getting to know him? Are you journaling and, and writing down the times when God showed up and showed out in your life? You know, those kinds of things. That's what God, that's what teaching others is all about. It's just sharing what you know about God and what he's done in your life. You know, it's not that hard. But it's so very important that we do that. And, and, and there's multiple reasons for it, but two of the biggest reasons is so that others will know. And, and what we're talking about here today is so God will be honored. You know, he's honored when we brag on him. He's honored when we brag about who he is and, and, and what he's done in our heart and our life. Uh, so, you know, how do you get to know him? Get in his word. Read, study, pray about it. If you don't understand something, ask somebody. You know, get involved in the church. You know, come to Sunday school where we break the word down. You know, come and listen to preaching. You know, we have a great Bible study on Wednesday nights when Barry goes through a lot of times breaking out verse by verse and, and studies. You know, any opportunity that you have to take part in a devotion, you know, there's lots of different things you can do. That's how you get to know about it. You know, ask somebody. And I hope if someone asks you, if you're a Christian, that you're ready to give an answer for the hope, right? That's what we're challenged to do. Uh, is it your heart's desire to know God? Or is that on the back burner? Again, you know, how much do you think it honors God if we put him on the back burner? You know, if, if getting to know him and understand him better and love him more, you know, is not the priority in your life? then again, that's why we're examining these Ten Commandments. That's why we're taking a closer look and examining our heart. You know, do we need to make some changes? Do you as a Christian, have you kind of fallen away from those things? Have you kind of dusted those under the rug? And I didn't really like to go to church and that's enough. I don't need any more and I don't need to tell anybody about God. I got preachers to do that and Sunday school teachers. No, it's all of our job. It's our job because that shows what our relationship personally is with God. We have such a relationship with him that we know all about him and that we love him so much because he's done this and that. And, you know, and we share that with other people. You know, that honors God. It really, really does. You know, uh, the writer, I can't remember if it was in the Herschel Hobbes book or if it was in the Sunday School book, was talking about uh, Jesus thinking about the church at Ephesus, or, or talking about the church of Ephesus, um, you know, in the book of Revelations, who, who told them, he said, I've got a little something against you, and I have against you because you have forgotten your first love. Now, it was a good church, and they were doing some good things, but they had forgotten to keep God first. They had forgotten, uh, you know, what Miss Kathy talked was last week, they had made other things get in the way, you know, instead of putting God first and making him first in our lives. You know, and that dishonored God. And, and Jesus told him, said, you got to get this right. Well, let me ask you, have you lost your first love? If you're a Christian, do you remember what it was like when you came to Jesus? Do you remember why you came to Jesus? Because for me, I can tell you, it was, it was at the point in time in my life when I understood just how much he loved me. And I fell in love with him at that moment in time. You know, and that was an incredible feeling. Well, have you grown apart, you know, since that day? 
do you need to come back? Well, again, that's why we're examining these Ten Commandments. That's why we're talking about these things, to, to, to encourage one another and to help one another and, and to, to get us back where we need to be. Um, let me ask you this as we get ready to close up. You know, if you're here and you're listening today and you don't understand uh, what that first love is, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you've never understood the depth of his love for you and giving his life on, on the cross for your sins, would you, would you find someone and just ask them that question? Find a Christian and get them to explain to you what that means. Uh, you know, I... I want everyone to know about Jesus. I want everyone to know how much he loves them. I want everyone to know what he did for them and how he can save you. You know, so if you don't know, would you ask someone that question? Number two, if you're here and you're a Christian and, and as we've studied in, uh, some of these things today that, that we learn in God's word, you know, have you been challenged? You know, it, you know, has it made you stop and think about the way you talk, uh, about the way you worship? And about uh, the way that you give your testimony and, and live your life. Does, does it tell the world that you're in that right relationship with God? And that you have that real relationship with God. And that he is your first love. And, and that he is your everything. And if not, I challenge you. Spend some time alone with him. Get, some, get back in his word. Uh, go back over this lesson and, and some of these words. And, and, you know, it's not too late. To, to get things right you know that's that's the wonderful thing about God is he's a forgiving God he's a loving God and you know yes we sin and, and no he doesn't like it and yes he has to spank us sometimes but he forgives us when we repent when we genuinely recognize and turn away from those things and turn back to him and, and honor him and glorify him by being obedient he blesses us he can do great and wonderful things in your life if you just let him so with that being said um uh, uh, I have a couple of lasting truths here from these last couple of uh, verses. Uh, says that we honor the Lord when we call upon others uh, to recognize His greatness and worship Him. Uh, number two, it says each generation has a responsibility to teach the next generation of the things of God. Number three, it says if no one else speaks for my generation, I have a responsibility to do so. I cannot pass it to someone else. So I want you guys to think about that. You can't pass it off on someone else. It's your job as much as it is anybody else to tell each other about God's greatness. And then lastly, it says worship the Lord and praise him for his wondrous works, his awe-inspiring acts, his great goodness, and his perfect righteousness. He's worthy. He's worthy to be put first. And he's worthy of our honor and our respect always. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys being with us. That's all I have for this week. I uh, hope you have a great day. And uh, next time we see you, uh, take care. Bye-bye.